I am here with my good friend, uh, Graham Richards, and I could say that he's my good friend because he actually stayed over at my house. We hung out, we had dinner. Graham lives in the UK. Now, what part of the UK do you live in? I live in a town called Harrogate, which is in North Yorkshire, in the north of England. Very beautiful area. Uh, I live on the edge of the Yorkshire Dales. And in fact, I, I work half the Yorkshire Dales in my um, area that I work for Ripon and Leeds Diocese, which is an Episcopalian uh, Church of England diocese. Hmm. So I actually get paid to drive around the Yorkshire Dales, but, you know, somebody has to, I guess. Wow, wow. And yeah. it's beautiful around there, it's right? It's it's stunning. Yeah, yeah. They're like mini canyons. Wow. You're a fundraiser. I mean, that that's mainly your career up until recently you're, you're working for uh, the diocese, right? Well, I, I work four days a week for the diocese as a children's and youth work advisor, uh, but I'm also a qualified fundraising manager, uh, mostly having worked in hospices. Uh, I currently work one day a week in a hospice in West Yorkshire, oh, wow. about 40 miles drive away. Yeah. And uh, we're building a new inpatient unit, and I'm, I'm working on raising money from grant-making trusts, uh, foundations. Wow. So I've, I've raised about 220,000 so far out of a target of 300. Wow, so you're, and when is the, when is the goal? I mean, when do you have to um, hit the... Well, the goal is when I can hit the 300. <laughs> um, but um, the, the, the actual building is costing just over 3 million pounds. Hmm. So I guess that's probably around 3.75 million dollars. Hmm. Wow. Uh, and uh, should be open in June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, now, work, the work's going on, it's, it's really coming on a pace. Mm. Now I have a question for you, and this is going to go off maybe a little off topic, but you know, you, you said that you do, we work one day a week for a hospice, right? So this is where people are dying, and it's, I mean, you would assume that it's such a negative environment, it's really, how do you, how do you um, create a message that's effective around, in that environment? I mean, because um, I mean, do you just say, oh, these poor people, these poor people, and do the pity thing, or is there some other um, approach that you're no, taking? Uh, there's an aspect of it which is about enabling people to be comfortable and to have dignity as they approach death. Hmm. But the main message that hospices give out is that we help people live hmm. to the end of their life. Wow. And so the quality of life that we can help people have is vastly better than what it would be if they were just fading away. Um, so, yeah, we help people live to the best to the end of their days. Um, and they're, they're actually very, it sounds strange, there's lots of happiness and laughter in hospices. If you've never been in one, uh, if you ever get a chance to visit somebody or go to one, do, because you'll be absolutely amazed just how um, light and, and positive the place feels. People are actually living very happy lives because they have possibly that urgency. This is the end of my life. Let, let me appreciate every moment. Do you think that's where the joy is coming from? There's there's that element in it. Um, every hospice will have a, a, a chaplain or spiritual advisor who is there to help the person come to terms with what's happening to them. Mm. Um, I mean, my father-in-law has three weeks ago has been diagnosed with terminal cancer, mm. um, and I'm we've sorry already, to hear that. yeah, um, we're, we've already linked him to the Macmillan Nurses, which is a charity in, in England uh, where they come to people's homes. Mm. Uh, but at some point in the, in the near future, he will then be referred to the local hospice mm -hmm. and um, he will then come under their care and their community nurses. So some people choose to die at home. The, the sad thing is that it's still only a very small minority of people will actually get to die in a hospice. Mm. Um, when I worked at a, a very large hospice in um, Leeds, a big city about 12 miles from here, um, we actually started to link up with some hospices or people working um, for hospice movement mm. in uh, Sarajevo. We discovered there were people out there that would be diagnosed terminally ill with cancer 
and they would be sent home just to lay on a bed on their own until they die wow. without any treatment, without any support or care. And uh, doctors out there said, no, this isn't right. We need to start hospices. So we were having people coming to Leeds and we were training them up over two or three weeks and then sending them back out there. Um, and then some of our nurses would go out there for a couple of weeks and, and train them and teach them about different aspects of palliative care. Hmm. Wow, that's great. Well, well, Graham, thanks so much. Graham actually sent me a calendar, beautiful calendar, of... Um, I don't know if that's uh, you can't, there. You go. You can kind of see it right there, of photos that you've taken. I've wanted to go to the southwest of the states, um, to the Grand Canyon, to Monument Valley, Arizona. They're all October 2012, and I started in Phoenix, Arizona, and then I travelled diagonally across the states to Boston, Massachusetts. Hmm. Wow. I ended up in New York, um, yeah. and just took over a thousand photos. Uh, Oh, the blessings of digital photography. I know, I know. It's incredible, uh, huh? Wow. The, the old days when you had to buy rolls of film and then you could take 36 pictures and then you had to pay to process it. And yeah. now you can just take thousands of pictures and pick the ones you want and throw the others away. These are amazing, though. Like I like this one a lot, actually. Yeah, that was a horse. That's in Mystery Valley, which lies along the side of Monument Valley and just into Utah from Colorado. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it's where the Anasazi Indians lived. Really? Uh, they just disappeared 600 years ago, and nobody knows where or why or how. And, and you can just see all the, uh, the remains of their adobe houses built into the sides of cliffs. Wow. I like this one, too. Oh, that's Durango. That's the railway station. The only thing that spoils that photo is the McDonald's sign in the background. God, leave it to McDonald's to ruin a scene like this, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You give us the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Kinks, and all these amazing uh, pieces of culture. And what do we give you? Yeah. We give you McDonald's. <laughs>